just trying to find different kind of pockets and like, you know, doing stuff that's, I guess, kind of familiar to people, but, you know, just putting my own kind of twist on it. Um, my name's Hamley, and I'm a music producer from Melbourne. Have you worked with much analog stuff before? No. Never? Oh, uh, not really. No. A little bit, but... This instrument here is called the Deckard's Dream. This is a contemporary recreation of a machine called the Yamaha CS80, which is a really famous polyphonic synthesizer, mostly because the composer, John Vangelis, used it to create the score for Blade Runner. It has this amazing, really thick, rich polyphonic synth sound. It's sort of a entire orchestral sort of experience, I suppose, in synthesizer terms, in one machine. And we have the CS80 here at MESS, and it's great, and it's a really beautiful, playable instrument. But the beauty of this thing is that it's really easy to control with a computer, so you get all the sound of that classic 80s polysynth, but with all the kind of modern trimmings and the ability to be able to work with a computer really seamlessly. Yeah, it's a really fantastic kind of boutique synthesizer, this one, but uh, it has a connection to a really important piece of electronic music history. The MIDI ports, you've now got your Deckard stream, so you just want to select input, output, track sync, so I'll get you to do that. Yep, so in, yep, and then that, that, perfect. So now send to the machine. Nice. It's definitely doing it. What works really well with this machine is like if you put like an arpeggio or something through like via Ableton, there's like some cool plugins that you can do that with. Um, it'll kind of trigger all the voices at once and creates this beautiful blossom of polyphonic sound. Okay. It's, yeah, it's really, really amazing. Right, let's turn it up and have a listen, hey? <laughs> there you go. So that's the Deckards. If we want to track that back into Ableton, maybe that's a good thing to do, so... That's so pretty. We... Sounds pretty wild. And then you can apply resonance to that as well. And then this is really great. You've got a ring modulator that you can apply. Sure. Um, but yeah, have fun. <laughs> Might start going through the presets a bit. Yeah, that's always a good thing. I've always kind of been messing around with uh, music software when I was a kid, and uh, especially when I was a teenager, just started really getting into it and, you know, trying to emulate people I, you know, looked up to and that kind of thing, and just sort of went from there. Who did you look up to? Uh, Dr. Dre, um, Jay Diller, uh, Pete Rock, Timberland. I think they all just had their own kind of distinct sound, yeah. and they all had something that like they were all kind of doing things differently to everybody else and like that always kind of inspired me to try to find my own sort of distinct thing. Oh, are you still looking for it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found it yet. <laughs> are we able to set up like a MIDI keyboard with this? Yeah, Is if you want possible? to just play keys with it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, I've worked with Stan Walker, I've worked with All Day, Pania. I'm kind of more into doing more R&B kind of stuff at the moment. Yes. Having done like hip hop for such a long time, like it, I, I'm kind of enjoying the more melodic, uh, layered kind of sound. I do like doing sessions with artists in the room and kind of bouncing off other people, mm -hmm. as opposed to just kind of sitting there and just making beats. But I guess I kind of enjoy that production process as opposed to just like beat making. I think one of the first programs I used, I probably wasn't really making beats back then, but just music software in general was uh, Logic. When I started making beats, I was uh, Sony Acid Pro, and then moved over to Ableton. Because I, I, I think I had placements before I even knew how to make like good beats, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> Can you look back at your own beats now? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I actually go back and I think, oh, these are like really different. Like yeah. the, the drums might suck or whatever, but there's like a cool idea in there. So, you know, sometimes I do kind of find inspiration from oh, you know, like older material.
I think a lot of people think, oh, because these mas machines are analog and they're vintage, that the sound that they make is somehow better than the software, but it doesn't actually pass any scrutiny, that kind of test. I think a lot of the time it's like, you know, people just realise that a lot of the music they're hearing, you can't really tell whether it's hardware or software. But the thing that makes the difference there is, yeah, that the artist, that makes a difference to the artist about the sound that they make and the experience they have while making it. And if that has an impact, it carries through into the art, you know, in the end, you know, ultimately into whatever sound they're making, how they value their sound, how they feel about it, all that stuff.